Hello, welcome to Sketchyville. I wanted to start this video with a little disclaimer. The end result of what I'm going to be making is a little plain Jane. But here's the thing. Neely and Lexi are ridiculously extra and really shortly here they're going to be posting photos to Facebook and Instagram showing these amazing ornaments that they painted. I am not an artist, I'm a crafter and I have no problem with that. And I wanted to show you guys that you can be minimal with how you finish these ornaments and still make something really special. So the first thing we're doing is using the dry magic sponge that comes with the kit to clean off any leftover char on the ornament. And if there's any sticky sap residue on there, go ahead and spray it with some alcohol and scrub it off. Be careful when you're prepping this ornament though, this particular one, because those little strings holding the ornament pieces on can be quite delicate. If you scrub a little too hard, you might break one of them off. But if that happens, don't lose your mind. Just glue it back together. Give the ornament a light sanding if you think it needs it. Use 180 grit or higher sandpaper to do that. And be really careful again to make sure that you don't break off any of those dangly bits. If you watched the video on the Santa ornament, you saw how I typically fill the engravings on these projects and that's by flood filling it with a precision tip applicator. And I tried doing it on this ornament, but it really didn't go well. The engraving is so thin that the tip of the applicator did not fit into those slots and I've made a big mess. So I switched to a fine point brush instead and just painted in the engravings. This didn't work very well either. So I gave up and slopped the paint on and it turns out that sandpaper is my BFF. So if you made a mess like I did, once the paint is dry, just give the ornament a really good sanding and you'll be able to remove any of the paint that slopped out of the engraved parts onto the face of the ornament. Again though, be really careful of those dangly bits. If you're impatient like me, let me introduce you to a tool that is an even better friend than sandpaper. It is a Dremel. I used a sandpaper disc when I did this rather than a sanding band, but I'm not sure it gave me any advantage. It was a lot quicker though, using the Dremel tool to get off that excess paint. Just... Be careful that you don't sand off too much and lose your engraved detail. Sorry, Lexi. I use furniture markers to stain my ornament, but you don't have to do it this way. You don't need to go out and buy anything to make this ornament. These are just something that I happen to have on hand for when I make miniature furniture. You can use watered down acrylic paint as a stain. You can color it with Sharpie or Crayola markers, or you can just paint it. You can do anything you want. Heck, you don't have to do anything at all. You can just glue that puppy together and call it a day. Seriously, there's no wrong way to do this project. A trick if you are using markers to color in or stain your project is to Spray it with a little alcohol if you're using Sharpie afterwards. This encourages that ink to bleed and erases any marker lines that you get. If you're using a water-based marker like a Crayola, go ahead and dab a little bit of water on it and it'll do the same thing. I glued my ornament together before I stained the back of it because I wanted to stain the back and edges at the same time because I was using a really dark color. This is totally a preference thing. You do you, boo. Use the glue that's included in the kit to put down a thin line of glue on the back of the top piece of the ornament. Make sure everything lines up when you press the two pieces together and then clamp it with some binder clips or just plop something heavy on top of it. You're gonna wanna let it sit like that for a few hours to give it time to set up completely before moving on to the next step. 
Well, I finished the back of my ornament with plain black stain. You can use this area as your own personal canvas. Go ahead and make Bob Ross proud back there if that's your thing. Personally, for me, the black kind of suits my mood for this 2020 holiday season. So we're in the home stretch. We're almost finished with the ornament, but before we can finish, you first get to learn from my mistakes. So to seal my ornament, I used a water-based polyurethane. I used water-based so it wouldn't stink up my house, but you're free to get high on fumes if that's your preference. No judgment, especially this year. I then made the mistake of hanging my ornament up to dry so that I could seal both the front and the back at the same time. This was a bad, bad idea. It dripped. Big, globby, 3D drips. So, to fix my error in judgment, I sealed it again with a triple thick gloss sealer. This sealer is really amazing stuff, but the best part was it was thick enough that it pretty much hid my drippy globby mess. Yay! Lastly, this puppy needs a hanger. Use whatever you like. Yarn, string, ribbon. But if you can't get your string to go through the hole, just put a little glue on the end and roll it between your fingers before trying to thread it through. Once you get it through, cut off the glue, tie the string in a knot, and you are done. If you'd like to purchase your own customized ornament with up to 10 family members' names engraved on it, you can click on the link in the description box below. Also in the description box, I've included links to all the products I use to make my ornament that aren't included in the kit. Thanks for visiting Sketchyville. We hope to see you again real soon. Mr. Pop.